A drive through Puducherry and you can be assured of witnessing this shrub with pretty flowers almost everywhere. From highways and forests, wastelands and villages, the Calotropis plant has made every available inch its home in these parts of Southeast India. In the small town of Kotakotam in Puducherry, this motley of women are actually foraging for the Calotropis, a wild plant that has found a place in global hot couture today. Designer Gauri Shankar comes from a family of weavers in South India. When it was his turn to take up the family profession, he inevitably chose the path of sustainable fashion. Along with his wife Ellen, the couple spent years hunting for a sustainable fiber, even as the answer stared right at them. I was just sitting in the window and looking at out, looking outside in the summer, there was nothing but this plant, you know. So it intrigued me how much of insects and birds are around this plant, you know. So I went outside, collected a little bit of fibers. I saw some sunbirds building a nest out of it. So I just collected a little bit of fibers. I came back home. I showed Ellen in the video call, like, baby, look at this, it's very amazing. And I did a little bit of research. People gave up on this fiber, I don't know why. So I want to do more research on it, can I do it? And Ellen said, yes, that's the beginning of this project. The idea was simple enough, to reimagine a forgotten Indian plant and spin it into a sustainable fiber for the future. But neither of them was quite prepared for just how much this unassuming plant was capable of giving. We started in September and uh, you know we were working on these pods mm -hmm. and uh, it disappeared all of a sudden you know in the month of October. And then okay we need to figure out how to do this and let's work on the stem. And we started working on the stem fibers. <laughs> Their fashion startup, Faborg, soon began research and production of both stem and pod fibers from the Calotropis. Their luxurious wool-like fiber, branded Wegenoon, was of course cruelty-free, but also zero waste. As it happened, the byproducts from this wool made for excellent insect repellents and bionutrients. Going by the name of Arca, the calotropis based repellent is today used across 6,000 acres of farmlands across South India. A state government project to take this organic product to farmers across Tamil Nadu is currently underway. See, even nowadays, there are a lot of people who still use this plant as a mulch for rice cultivation. This has been done for thousands of years. This was basically, they call it Seda Medical in Tamil, which means like when you prepare the land for rice cultivation, you soak the land. At that time, you put cut these plants and put it inside the soaking time, about like 10 to 15 days. So once uh, that, that soaking process is done, the land gets all the nutrient that it requires. It does not require any other fertilizer too. So now the, the difficulty in doing this process is like, because of the labor is very expensive right now, and uh, it's very uh, uh, tricky plant to handle. Young farmer Prithviraj has been growing cashew, mango and jackfruit on about eight acres of his land. As he shows us around his organic cashew farm, we learn that it is actually unusual for cash farmers in the region to opt for natural fertilizers or pesticides. But losing his father to cancer and witnessing the effects of climate change firsthand served as the tipping point for Prithviraj. அதுக்கப்புறம் <laughs> Kachida, Samitala, Rakora, Patina, Elame Pudusudna. 
For farmers like Prithviraj, the ready-to-use Arka bio-nutrient helped to rediscover the goodness of this native wild shrub. But that was not all. Over time, sustained research under Cabotropis led to another interesting application, that of a natural mosquito repellent. I gave a big bottle to my friend who has a big house and he has mosquito issues and he sprayed it. Nothing after that, you know, he was like so happy. He said, you should sell this. You can't just keep this, this is gold. And Don't forget about the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is your gold, this is important, this is so you know. important right now. With three applications from a single plant under their belt, the serial innovators have since gone to great lengths to ensure complete sustainability. One of the main steps was opting for a small natural dyeing unit at their extraction facility itself. With, with our previous unit, we had no other choice but to put the water back into the ETP where the water uh, goes to a common effluent plant mixed along with all the chemical dyed water. So it didn't make any sense at all for us. That's the biggest difference when it comes to natural dyes, that whatever you put would degrade when it comes out. So that's the amazing part, you're not going to have the sludge. So sludge, when I uh, say sludge, this is never spoken in the industry a lot. What happens uh, when you certify a unit, when, you, when a unit is certified as organic, unit and zero emission unit, they talk about zero emission only on the water aspect of it. And there is a huge sludge that is created that is generally collected and dumped in a landfill, in a safe and secure landfill. And every year then is there is rain, rains coming, you can see uh, in Tirupur and all this area, some ETPs would get flooded and all the water would contaminate the neighboring lands. So if you see these raw materials, these are available everywhere in the Ayurvedic medicine shop. And this is anato, this is also called Bixa seeds. It's available, it grows abundantly in India. It's available everywhere. And this is Kadukai, this is this is used as a mordant and sometimes as a direct color by itself. Gauri and Ellen have been using locally available natural materials like kadukkai or myrobalan, mother and alum for dyeing, and rain fed cotton for blending their fabrics. There is not a lot of fabric makers who are putting their foot down and saying that, you know, only natural dyes. They have done so much of hard work to, ex to create beautiful natural fabric and uh, after that, it's, it's, yeah, it's a mystery, like what hmm. happens. Or they don't, uh, I'm sure they care, but maybe they don't think uh, on a long term that, uh, you know, we have to start standing for our values till the end. It's uh, not only what we do, but also like if we, if we put uh, our own uh, requirements uh, for the fabric all the way till the end, this is uh, how the change can happen. The green alternative to the global wool market has also helped create sustainable livelihoods for the women of Kota Kupam. Palaini Amal has been clocking a 9 to 5 job here at the Faborg unit, extracting, cleaning and processing calotropous fibre for the last four years and making a monthly earning of 6,000 rupees. <laughs> Having worked here for the last three years, Anita explains the intricacies of working with the Calotropis. The bounteous plant allows them to work through all seasons, ensuring a stable source of income. Now, we have to go to the mission. We have to go to the mission. We have to go to Adinia 
அந்த சீசன் வெய்ய நாள்ல அப்ப வந்து சீசன் நல்லா காய் காய்க்கும் அப்ப வந்து பஞ்சு எடுத்தா வீணாவாது அதனால அந்த டைம் நாங்க பஞ்சு எடுப்போம் மழை நாள்ல வந்து தண்டு வந்து யூஸ் பண்ணுவோம் with the textile industry being one of the most polluting industries in the world efforts like gori and elens are pushing to relook processes from seed to closet while efforts like theirs attempt to create a ripple in the global fashion industry the generous calotropis has already changed the world for those like prithviraj and palaniyamal